Hey everybody, hope everyone's having a fantastic day. So I got a couple of quick tips for you today. They're on painting trucks and wheels. I'm gonna show you how you can get a really nice shadow effect on your side frames with no extra work. And I'm also gonna show you how you can paint a whole schwack of wheels up at one time. I also wanna show you my technique for eliminating the dreaded slinky effect. Hey, happy Father's Day, everybody. Sitting outside with my son today, we're gonna paint up some trucks and some wheels. So, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm a huge fan of the BLMA trucks and wheels, and I've got a bunch of side frames here, and I've got a bunch of axles here that were pulled from the side frames. I'm also using the Tangent 36 inch 537 axle length wheels. These are great wheels. They're indistinguishable from the BLMA wheel, Craig's wheel from way back when, and I absolutely love them. Okay, so what I've done is, usually what I'll do is I'll mass produce uh, this, uh, kind of do the mass production thing. I'll do a whole whack at the same time. So side frames, 100 ton, okay? 36 inch wheels pulled out of them. You're gonna take your side frames and you're gonna zap them down. This is just an old Athern blue box lid. You're gonna zap them down to a piece of tape looped over the end. You're gonna go right side up. And the reason for that is when we paint, we wanna go 45 degrees with the old Pash H here, down like this. Now the paint's gonna to stick to the upper surfaces and the under surfaces are gonna remain black, which is gonna give you a nice shadowed effect. You don't wanna paint them like this. If you wanna paint them like this, that's gonna to add to the entire depth and it's gonna really bring out the details on your trucks. Okay, so that's pretty simple, straightforward. Your side frames are now done. Now, to do wheels, old piece of eighth inch masonite, you can see it's just broken off from a strip of say two and a half inch wide by the looks of things. And I take a jigsaw and I'll cut just like this, little saw curves into the edge, about three eighths of an inch apart, roughly a quarter of an inch in, doesn't matter how far in it goes. You're gonna take your wheels. Now, if this kerf, your blade isn't wide enough to accept the axle, you're gonna take a wedge file and you're just gonna open up the edge like that, okay? Then you take your wheels and you just gently press fit them in. You don't wanna be jamming those in there, so that's why you wanna make sure that you're gonna make it a nice, easy slip fit, otherwise you run the risk of bending your axles. And, Pash H, you're gonna spray those wheel faces, okay? Now, there's a whole bunch of other ways of doing this. I know there's people out there that are making things that cover the wheel tread and all that kind of crap. That's fine, that's groovy, that's cool, but there's just, I like doing things quick and simple. So, I paint all that. Other people are gonna say you don't wanna get that axle point painted. For what I do with my trucks, it doesn't matter. I believe that you can get rid of the slinky effect with resistance on your wheels. Now that also comes hand in hand with the type of couplers you use. I've mentioned this before, 1015s, 1016s. I use 1015, 1016 body mounts, and the reason for that is the spring, the centering spring, is on the front side of the hub that holds and pivots that uh, coupler. Therefore, when you're pulling, there's no spring involved. The reason that truck mount couplers bounce back and forth, the spring is behind there. So you're constantly pulling on the spring. It's doing the accordion thing. Body mount, 1015s, you can pretty much eliminate that, okay? You wanna really eliminate it. You're gonna put some resistance in each one of your freight cars, and I'm gonna show you how to do that at the end. So as a result, I don't care if those axle points are painted and it creates a little bit of resistance in the truck, I'm gonna add that anyway. Cool? All right, anything else, Brokes? No. I think that's it. Okay, let's get to getting these wheels put on here, get these trucks built up, and I'll show you how this is gonna work out. All right, so we've got our wheels all painted up. I give them a quick coat of dull as well, and we can just take them and drop them into our bin like this until we're ready to use them. 
and uh, Rogues is going to build up a truck for us. So here, there's two wheels, you build up a truck. So this is why I don't get too concerned with getting the treads painted, is I keep them apart like this. If I'm bored one night, I'll just plop down in front of the TV and I'll put wheels in trucks and uh, then I'm ready to rock and roll. I have a bin for trucks that have the wheels cleaned and a bin for trucks that have the uh, still have dirty wheels in them. So there, okay, we got our first truck put together, okay? So all we're gonna do is take some of this nasty stuff here, lacquer thinner, and uh, I'm not even gonna bother putting that on. We all know this stuff is nasty, so take appropriate precautions. We're gonna put that like that over top of an old piece of scrap track. Scrap track you wanna use because the plastic ties, this stuff will actually melt to them. You're just gonna take your truck, run it back and forth like this, okay? I usually do a whole bunch of trucks at once. I'll do eight until the lacquer thinner dries up, and then I'll move to a clean spot, and I'll do a second pass. So if you look there, we'll go here, and we'll have a little bit of dry. Wheels are now clean. So that can go into the clean bin. Cool, that's all there is to it. So you don't have to worry about uh, masking off uh, the tread face and all that kind of stuff. It's this simple. Like I said, the mash production technique works awesome in this. And uh, let's get the rest of these things all mounted into here and cleaned up real quick. All right, let's add some resistance here. So we're going to take one axle out of our truck. Okay, now we want to go and find where the bushing is for the insulating and the non-insulated end. You want to work on the non-insulated end here. So what I do is I'll just scrape across from the axle a little bit out. There's a little lip there. If the paint comes off and it's shiny, obviously that's the metal end. The other end, if there's no paint comes off, that's the insulated end. You can look under magnification too. I just find this a little bit easier to do it that way. So non, or this is the non-insulated end here. These are coupler centering springs. Now I build all my own couplers, 10, 15s or 16s, and I end up with extra springs. Usually uh, for 10 couplers that, or 10 pairs of couplers, you end up with 24 springs. So you end up with four extra springs per package of couplers if you're buying in bulk, okay? You can also order these things individually. You want the coupler centering springs. You don't want the restraining springs. The restraining springs are too big and you can see them on the outside of the truck. So you're gonna take one of those centering springs and I find the proper tension is one-third of the stack of spring. So we're gonna go one-third of the way in, we're gonna cut one-third of the coils off, okay, and that's gonna leave us, there's the one-third, it's gonna leave us with two-thirds of the coil. This is what we want. Now this is the factory end, this is the cutoff end. You want the cutoff end to go over top of the point of your axle. So take a pair of tweezers and you slip, you slip them in here to the factory end, grab that like that, and you're just going to take this end and it's going to go over top of the point of the axle. This can be a little tricky. Find some magnification if you need it. There we go. See it's going to sit, balance on there. You're going to take your truck, put it back together just as you normally would if there was no spring in there. Okay, there you go. You now have resistance on that truck. Now, for a car, what I do is I will take, and I have the spring to the outside end of the car on the B end. So the brake wheel end, I'll put the spring there. The only reason I do that, because then I know exactly where it is if I have to do anything to that car. I mean, you can still see it if you look down here. You can see the spring, if you wiggle it around, it shines because it's copper, right? But an easy way to tell is you put it to the outboard side of the car on the brake wheel end. There you go. The other end, standard truck, not modified. You have enough resistance on that car. It's not gonna roll away. I have a 1.85% is my maximum grade. My cars won't roll away on the grade. They'll, they'll roll, like if you push them, they'll roll and come to a gradual stop. That's about what you want. Obviously, this is a little bit of a balancing game. You want to be able to 
keep that car restrained, but at the same time you don't want that wheel sliding. Obviously if the wheel's sliding, you gotta cut a little bit more off of that spring. But as I say, one third off the end, two thirds on the end of the axle, that's about perfect. There you go gang, two real quick tips for getting piles of wheels painted and a nice shadow effect on your side frames. The spring over the end of the axle, I've been doing that for 10 plus years, zero problems whatsoever. I first started doing it because I was having issues with cars bunching up against my locomotives going downgrade. This train here, it's dropping down to 1.85%. The whole train's under tension, zero slinky effect at the end. So think you're going to be real happy with that if you don't dig the slinky. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you dig it. We'll see you next time.